We are a generation who loves God. We are a generation who trusts in God. We will always hope in God. Greetings, greetings, greetings in the wonderful, precious, holy name of Jesus. It is so good to be with you. It's another day that God, our gracious and our merciful God has given us. Another day to live to the fullest, another day to press on, another day to believe our God, to do great things in our life. And God is good, God is gracious, God is merciful, and He never leaves us helpless. My dear friend, I want to speak to you today, and the title of my message is Why Forgiveness is Important. And I'll basically show you and explain from the scripture what happens when we don't forgive while God has forgiven us? Let us begin by welcoming the Holy Spirit, and then I'll share this word with you, and then we'll go into a time of prayer. I'll pray for you in line with this word. Wherever you are in your own words, welcome the Holy Spirit in that place. Precious Holy Spirit of God, I welcome you. Come, Lord Holy Spirit, take over control and help us to pray. Help us to press in and help us to receive from the word of the Lord today. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. My dear friend, now to demonstrate what happens when God forgives us, but we don't forgive others, I'm going to read to you the parable of the unmerciful servant. We're going to read from the Gospel of Matthew chapter 18 from verse 21. It says, Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me? Up to seven times? Verse 22, Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but seventy-seven times. Verse 23, Therefore the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. Verse 24, As he began the settlement, a man who owed him ten thousand bags of gold was brought to him. Verse 25, Since he was not able to pay, the master ordered that he and his wife and his children and all that he had be sold to repay the debt. Verse 26 At this the servant fell on his knees before him. Be patient with me, he begged, and I will pay back everything. Verse 27 The servant's master took pity on him and cancelled the debt and let him go. Verse 28 But when that servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred silver coins. He grabbed him and began to choke him. Pay back what you owe me, he demanded. Verse 29. His fellow servant fell to his knees and begged him, Be patient with me, and I will pay it back. Verse 30. But he refused. Instead, he went off and had the man thrown into prison until he could pay the debt. Verse 31 When the other servants saw what had happened, they were outraged, and they went and told their master everything that had happened. Verse 32 Then the master called the servant in. You wicked servant, he said. I cancelled all that debt of yours, because you begged me to. Verse 33 Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant just as I had mercy on you? Verse 34 In his anger, his master handed him over to the jailers to be tortured until he should pay back all he owed. Verse 35 This is how my heavenly Father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother or your sister from your heart. Now this shows us a parable. And this parable perfectly depicts what has happened in Christ as we are forgiven our sin and God has had mercy on us and how we also ought to have mercy on others just the same way that God has had mercy on us. 
Let's start from the beginning and let's just analyze what it says. It says, Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me? Up to seven times? Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but seventy-seven times. Now over here, many people think that the Lord is saying, only forgive seventy-seven times. But what I truly believe he is saying is, forgive as much as is needed. Forgive and forget. Let it go. Forgive just as God has forgiven you. How many times do we sin against God? How many times do we make mistakes and we turn back to God and God forgives us? In the same way, that many times we should also look at others and forgive them. Now, it goes on and says, Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but seventy-seven times. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle his accounts with his servants. As he began the settlement, a man who owed him ten thousand bags of gold was brought to him. Since he was not able to pay, the master ordered that he and his wife and his children and all that he had be sold to repay the debt. At this the servant fell on his knees before him. Be patient with me, he begged, and I will pay back everything. The servant's master took pity on him, cancelled the debt, and let him go. Now, this depicts what has happened to us in Christ as we are forgiven, and as we are born again believers, and we go out and we make mistakes, and we come back to God, and we ask Him to forgive us. And God forgives us. He has mercy on us. Just as this king had mercy on his servant. The servant's master took pity on him and cancelled the debt and let him go. But when that servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred silver coins. Now this hundred silver coins can represent offense that you've picked up because of what someone else did. It can represent anger towards someone else because of what they said to you. It could represent some sort of feeling that you're holding against someone else because of something they did to you. It goes on and says, He grabbed him and began to choke him. So he began to get revenge. He began to take out that unforgiveness on him. Pay back what you owe me. He demanded. His fellow servant fell at his knees and begged him, Be patient with me, and I will pay it back. But he refused. Now this is what happens when you stubbornly hold on to unforgiveness. And I understand and know it's not that easy. Which is why it's so important when it's difficult to forgive. Let us ask God, God help us. Help me to forgive. This situation is very bad. It, it was so bad. It hurt me so bad. This person did something so bad. Help me to forgive God. And as you ask God, He will help you. Because I do understand and know, sometimes it's easier said than done. But I want to encourage you, take note to what is being said in this parable in the scripture. But he refused. Instead, he went off and he had the man thrown into prison until he could pay the debt. When the other servants saw what had happened, they were outraged, and they went and told their master everything that had happened. Then the master called the servant in. You wicked servant, he said. I cancelled all that debt of yours because you begged me to. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant just as I had mercy on you? Now, this is the way that God sees things concerning forgiveness. He sees that because He has forgiven us, in the same way we should also have mercy and forgive others who have offended us. 
Now take note what happened because of this unforgiveness. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant as I had mercy on you? In anger, his master handed him over to the jailers to be tortured. Unforgiveness becomes a jail and it becomes a place of torment and torture. It doesn't hold the other person back. It holds you back. Because what we have been forgiven of is great. What God has forgiven us of is so great. And when we are unable to forgive others who have sinned against us, it puts us in a place where the punishment that was due, that was forgiven, ends up being reinstated. And the way it becomes reinstated is through a type of hell, if I can call it that, referred to as unforgiveness. It puts you in a place of bitterness. It puts you in a place that holds you back. It puts you in a place that only holds you back and limits you. And we should be like our Heavenly Father, gracious and merciful towards others. He expects that of us because He has forgiven us. In His anger, His Master handed Him over to the jailers to be tortured until He should pay back all that He owed. This is how my Heavenly Father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother or your sister from your heart. Now, at the end of this passage of Scripture, even as I read, I was reading from the NIV. It ends by saying, from your heart. So forgiveness is not just a matter of saying, I forgive you. But it's coming to that place in your heart. And along with the words, from your heart, truly letting go and forgiving the person. Choosing to have mercy, just as God has had mercy on you. And saying that, let us go into a time of prayer. Let us praise God just for a few moments, and then we'll begin to pray. And I want to pray for you for mighty deliverance from unforgiveness. Father, we praise you and we thank you. Thank you for this word. It's not the easiest word to hear, but it's powerful. It's a word that can change lives and bring liberation to those who are captive. And we choose to follow you in all that we do, knowing that you're the God who speaks and you live, and you make a way where there seems to be no way. Make a way in the wilderness, you make a way for us. We choose to trust in you and believe you, knowing that you're the God who speaks and you live. Thank you for your grace and your mercy that is released upon us today. And thank you for another day that we can change and walk in the fullness of what you have ordained for us to walk in. I give you praise and I thank you for this. In the name of Jesus. Amen. My dear friend, our God is good. Our God is gracious. Now I'm going to pray for you that God will give you the grace. And as I pray for you, I want you to search deeply in your heart where there is any unforgiveness against anyone, anyone else. And as you search deeply and see where there is unforgiveness or offense or anger or hurt or pain, I want you to remember that God has also forgiven you. And with that same grace that God has shown you, I want to encourage you, forgive that individual. Let it go so that you can be set free from that jail of unforgiveness and from the torture that comes from unforgiveness. I encourage you as I pray for you, comment and agree and connect in faith. Father, I pray for my dear friend. Even in this time, even in this period, as we have read this powerful passage of scripture, as we have chosen to trust in you, I pray that you'll release the grace. Give us the grace to forgive just as you have forgiven us. And Father, 
it's easier said than done. We saw that the price that was paid for our forgiveness and for our sins was great. And in the same way as we forgive others, sometimes it's not that easy. There's a great price. It's very difficult. But help us to forgive. Help us, Lord, by your grace and by your mercy. There are some situations that people have been through that are very difficult to forgive and to let go of. But I pray today, by your grace and by your mercy, do a miracle. And help my dear friend, wherever my dear friend has faced such a situation, to forgive from their heart, just as you have forgiven. I ask this in Jesus' name. And Father, as you do so, I pray release my dear friend from every jail of unforgiveness. From every torture of unforgiveness from every torment of unforgiveness. And let my dear friend's life make progress. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. My dear friend, right now, as you have thought of that person, whoever it is, or multiple people, who have done wrong against you, I want you to take a moment to forgive them and to let it go just in the same way, trusting and knowing that God has forgiven you of all the wrong that you've done and has let it go. Hallelujah. The grace of God is sufficient. And the grace of God is empowering you to let go even right now. In the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. God bless you, my dear friend. Until next time, shalom and goodbye. Thank you for watching. If you were blessed by this video and you would like to support us to keep making content like this, you can do so via PayPal or Patreon. The links are provided in the description. God bless you and goodbye.